recording yes it's on I haven't checked any audio settings so if I botch this it, it, it is going to be my fault and my fault only anyway so the situation is thus uh, I have taken part in uh, in some of the local uh, local sci-fi writing workshops and as a part of that I'm working on a story and the current state of working on the story has taken me to the idea that I kind of maybe want to do a heist idea but because it is uh, this idea is currently very underdeveloped uh, I bugged Nux and uh, and we started bouncing <laughs> <laughs> and 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 we started bouncing some ideas and those ideas took us to the chaos nova universe so right now it's like we're pulling like double duty uh, basically uh, basically now i'm bouncing the ideas for for the story in the chaos nova universe but if i can glean anything for for my story then yoink and uh, the the synopsis of the story is rather simple uh, both of them so in in both cases there shall be uh, some sort of uh, unspecified space time wedgie that uh, allows some sort of interaction between different realities and or locations and or um multiverse stuff <laughs> and uh, and uh, in a previous situation of of the story I'm working on uh, a ship is approaching the, the time space wedgie and uh, there are only two survivors on that ship and those survivors uh, will go through uh, will go through a scenario that uh, is suspiciously similar to the uh, to a to one uh, local fairy tale. Um, basically, the the initial brief or the prompt for for the story was to use certain elements from uh, uh, from local fairy tales. So th so that's 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 uh, that's where it got its beginning. But I'm building layers on it. Uh, yeah, and my initial layering was that. Uh, so, so basically, at first, I took the fairy tale, I took the characters, I took the uh, story structure, and just converted it into space. And for a fi for like five minutes or so, I was I was pretty pleased with myself. But uh, but when I uh, when I read the result to the others uh, in the workshop, they uh, immediately pointed out some pretty obvious uh, uh, pretty obvious weaknesses, and uh, it became pretty clear that just just lift just asset flipping the fairy tale into space uh, alone won't make for a good story. So it's it's like it's a fun experiment and it's a, uh, it's fun practice. But altogether, it won't hold up as a story. Uh, so I started thinking how to keep that part mostly as is, while making, while placing it into a bigger context. So, so the initial story, uh, initial addition, was that these two people shall be manipulated by uh, some other people who reside by the space-time wedgie uh, because science <laughs> and and the uh, oh yeah and I left out the part that the people who reside uh, by the space-time wedgie they have learned to like their technology is uh, is way at way higher level than the technology of those in in the uh, in the ship, and they can use the technology to access uh, 
different uh, realities, timelines, places, etc. So, so there's there's some interdi interdimensional shenanigans going on. And uh, and and now I'm bugging Nux to bounce the ideas so that uh, so that I can uh, glean material for my story, and maybe in the process we can also uh, spawn a short story in the Chaos Nova universe. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> the comparison, or not comparison, but the sort of thing you drew my attention to was the similarities. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Sort of research by the void cloud. Yeah, I, I think I think that's where I got the space time witch idea in the first place, probably. <laughs> so my brain just went to the familiar familiar stuff. I, this doesn't help with the ideas or anything, but I find I found in the writing course that I went on, um but my character pieces and the like the written in text, the stuff that I am fully in tune and in depth with mm -hmm. is far more successful than the stuff that I'm mm -hmm. just like trying to make work. So mm -hmm. it's better yeah. to stuff. And uh, and in this case, that's that's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to keep the or quote unquote original fairy tale. Uh, with the same structure, at least in some form, because there there are elements there that that I that really fascinate me. So basically, the idea is that uh, uh, you have people in a farm. Uh, it, it's a it's an orphan story basically. So that that part is uninteresting. You have an orphan who is forced to do hard labor and uh, who has hard life, uh, which is also the uninteresting part. The interesting part comes when a stranger visits the farm, a stranger who is said to be a sorcerer in disguise or a, a famous uh, wise man, but he's uh, disguised as a, uh, as a beggar and uh, he will give an item to the orphan I think it was a, a headkerchief, headkerchief or a scarf or something and uh, she's supposed to tie it around her head next time she goes to bed and when she goes to bed uh, she finds herself in the middle of a very vivid dream and in the dream she will find herself in a strange place in a strange farm which uh, which she, she surmises must be hell because it is very odd and very sort of like, I don't know, reasons and, and in there uh, she finds a device that uh, grinds the grain for her basically so she she finds she finds a device that would make her work a, a lot easier, and uh, and uh, she thinks how to get away, uh, like how to transport the thing with her, and lo and behold, there is a spare horse somewhere nearby. So she just uh, places the horse in front of the. Uh, I think it was a big chest or something. Uh, she she just puts the horse uh, tie, ties the chest to the horse and and goes her merry way and drags the chest to her own uh, farm. And when she wakes up, it's still there. So so that's the uh, that's the part that's, that's in interesting that you're visiting another place, presumably in your dream, and you yoink a thing from that place. And so when uh, when I was uh, trying to put together the original well the, not the original but the the initial uh, version of that story or the, the initial remix of that fairy tale uh, I simply flipped all the action into space instead of an orphan we have uh, a young soldier or a soldier wannabe who is the only survivor from her unit 
and and she's been picked up by by uh, a ship whose crew is also dead except for one uh, although in a later in iteration I, I think I'm gonna make them uh, the two survivors of the same unit to begin with so it's like one is the quartermaster and the other is the is the little idiot who was never even given a weapon and that's how she survived <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, as they come into contact with the facility uh, there's I think my initial idea was that there's some air exchange uh, which would imply some sort of uh, drugs man and uh, and uh, in this altered state uh, so, so the quartermaster would be physically going into the station but not the the younger one so it's like only one of them goes uh, goes aboard the station and the other one stays on the ship and while on the ship uh, she will come into contact with the station air because of reasons and uh, and that makes her fall asleep see strange things see a strange device somewhere uh, that is obviously not on the ship and uh, and I think the idea was that uh, uh, the device would be generating oxygen or, or accelerating photosynthesis in a strange world and she picks up a plant from the strange world and when she wakes up she still has the plant so she decides to go back in there and uh, there's some dream manipulation so she she will quote unquote fall asleep again uh, put some pulleys or harnesses on the device and and uh, uh, pinch herself from the nose or do something to quote unquote wake up and and this way she will be able to pull it through so so that was the initial thought and then building on it uh, the idea grew that the anomaly people uh, would be interested in studying the behavior of of those uh, less advanced people, and they would they would wanna they would wanna test out how certain scenario uh, how certain people re uh, respond to certain scenarios, and the goal would have been to uh, set up uh, 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 set up contacts with other human homeworlds and to uh, give access to this more advanced technology and the end uh, not end result but end conclusion would have been that uh, yeah maybe it's a better idea to like everything kind of worked but uh, but also the ship blew up so maybe it's a better idea to actually you know talk to people <laughs> in in <laughs> instead of relying on strange dreams but uh, but uh, but uh, today I started liking the idea that it is all a heist. So there might still be the science angle in there, but this time the quote unquote anomaly people would be interested in grabbing something from uh, from a different timeline or, or an alternate location that for some reason they can't go and just fetch themselves but instead are manipulating these uh, uh, less technologically advanced people into doing mm. <laughs> so it's all all very long and convoluted if I put it like this And uh, and in case of a parallel story in Chaos Nova Universe, where we would have the the facility or a uh, or an exploitative ship or or a science facility uh, near the Void Cloud, they would also be sending people into other places or in, into other uh, space time thingies but they, the goal would be different they they would send them in to either I don't know test something on them or or 
or just send agents in that way or some, something of that sort. So the heist uh, probably does not apply there. The uh, the higher beings. Uh, um, oh, I had something there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the big problem is the higher beings and the whole. Well, if they want something, why would they manipulate these people? Why are they not yeah, going yeah. themselves? But if you can answer that question, I think you probably find a message chunk of good story with it. I know, right? <laughs> That's why I'm asking you. get this simple thing out of the way, we'll be fine. Everything yeah, will be yeah, fine. Yeah, like, yeah. Why, why, don't, why not just step through the portal and pick the do that up themselves? Yeah. Uh, I think the reason I came up with was kind of convoluted and kind of... Do tell, you know. because I, I actually have some notes. Let's see if okay. if I came up with something similar. Well, I was just thinking that maybe the reason the higher beings are doing this is because they themselves, for X reason, can't. So they need the humans to do it. Maybe they can't. They uh, okay. Uh, one. Let's okay, make one thing clear. This. They are humans. They are. They are mm -hmm. not. They are not like energy being or anything like that. That they are just humans with a higher technological thing. They might right. have they might have some mutations or like they the presence of the anomaly do that might have influenced them over the generations, but basically they are humans. They're humans, right. So everyone in this deal is humans. Yeah. Just one group have got a higher yeah. level of technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I I think it's it's more interesting if it's humans uh, versus humans or humans mm -hmm. on humans upon humans. And again it's what we know, really, isn't it? Yeah. Plus, I I don't really want to make up any aliens or something like that. I just I just want to mm. have humans who have settled. Maybe it was an expedition uh, who came to study this anomaly, and then they they settled near it because they were able to exploit it somehow, and then they kept building on their ship slash uh, station and uh, and now it's a big place it's it, it's basically like a home world in a can and <laughs> and since and since they since they have this uh, this whole interdimensional do adding technology they are able to utilize they are able to vent in atmosphere or uh, use use planetary atmosphere as a source for their own air so it's like they don't even have to generate a whole lot of things there and they can uh, they can even get get rid of their waste heat by venting it into into a home world somewhere mm. Maybe there is even a a trade relation with with some distant moon that they give their heat in exchange of uh, local air, something like that. So like mm. mutually beneficial stuff. But yeah, so the the whole why why can't they just do it themselves? Yeah. That's uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share the idea that I had. Uh, so, so the point is uh, that uh, it's it's not it's not that these people in general can't just uh, move into another place and take something from there. Uh, I was thinking that the problem should be that these specific people, uh, like two two or three characters, so let's say two, uh, these specific two people can't step through a specific portal and uh, and snatch a specific doodad because something has gone wrong or, or it's like they have uh, now things are a little bit fuzzy here but either they have uh, done a boo-boo and <laughs> lost their lost their device into a world that the, the other side now won't 
might uh, the other side might might be screening the portal and and somehow won't let them through or maybe they maybe one of them gambled it away and they like it's it's not a real problem it's like uh, they could just ask for more from their management but they don't want to get into trouble with management because they have been doing something stupid so uh, I, I would I would want to put something stupid in there <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, in in my store's case. It's not supposed to be like super serious. It's it's more like, oh no, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are the uh, two to three characters you're thinking of having on the ship itself uh, that you've decided now they're all from the same unit. And they're all... No, wait. I'm I'm talking about two groups or, or two pairs. One pair. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So one pa one about. one oh. pair is the people from the lower tech low tech ship. One mm -hmm. of them is the quartermaster, and the other is the uh, is the rookie. So those those two are the same. Right, they came from the same. Y yeah, unit. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, those were who I was talking about. So, I don't know, this is, uh, thinking that maybe there was something that... But, here, here, here's, here's, here's the thing, so, uh, I'm not expecting you to give me directly any ideas for my story, I can, I can snatch those anyway. Uh, what I'm more interested about is, uh, if we can transport some of these, uh, elements into Kaznov universe. And and uh, invent a facility, a a ship, a station near near the cloud. In yeah. one of the many realities, and have some sort of do that happening there, and the the plot there. Uh, I I'm not trying to make it related to this plot at all. I'm just. I'm just uh, sort of poking at the setting to see if we can maybe uh, maybe build up uh, a, a Chaos Nova story out of this this fluff. Notepads. Ah. Oh, look, you know. <laughs> they were beside my bed all along. <laughs> it's always important to keep notepads by your beds, kids. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, it just feels good to write shit down. Yeah. I I have my no do that right here. Research. Facility slash shit. And it it do might that. be it might be a servo facility or it might be a quote unquote independent facility. It might be a rogue in rogue science <laughs> facility. Yeah, I think there's is a lot of like, servo or servo prime. Servo. So I think our, the servo that we encounter originally would be more interested in trying to break the void valve or whatever and try to figure that out. Now, of course, the thing is that servo prime probably knows a lot about what the other servers are doing, so it's more like uh, uh, more like that the substream servos themselves are kind of being puppeteered already or like they're given goals that ultimately feed into prime servos uh, agenda research or the sort of inseminating many many research ideas into the many servos and one of the and and occasionally some of them will yield something useful. Oh, puppet servos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
it see, and it's from the sounds of it, it sounds like they've already worked out how to breach the clouds. Uh, well, maybe not entirely, but they they have learned enough. Uh, they they have let's say they have studied it enough to implement some of the uh, doodads. So it's like maybe that's where some of the uh, 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 some of the interaction or, or the the stream to stream transit comes from is those studies. Ah, oh, no, actually, Kyo said that uh, that some of this uh, that the initial uh, initial boost came from servo snatching. Uh, the skilf made a mistake and he snatched up some of their technology. But even so, the cloud studies especially downstream with more time pumped into the uh, with the time dilation thing going on uh, they they would improve on those initial technologies maybe and and they would be able to uh, they would be able to send people through and since uh, since the void cloud is a quote-unquote natural phenomenon or like just just a natural soft spot in the in the reality uh, the such travels or such uh, uh, such voyages would not go detected the same way as intentional uh, stream jumping would go. So I would I would think that if you travel between streams, especially if you travel from a farther out branch closer to the main reality, it should leave a trace. And mm -hmm. in certain cases you would not want to leave a trace because you wouldn't want the the skill to know uh, as much uh, the, you wouldn't want them to know uh, the extent of your knowledge, the extent of your research. So. Is a soft spot. Yeah. So it's like people, people, quote unquote, fall through the carpet of reality all the time over there. So like they, they cross over to other realities all the time. So that's, that's something that's expected. So if somebody is able to do it in somewhat controlled conditions, the interdimensional beings w won't know anyway. So they, they, they wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the uh, random, uh, Random travelers and uh, and intentional travelers. At least, at least until the intentional travelers don't uh, don't make too many mistakes. Hang on. <laughs> It's been a long day when you try and spell the word people with an A. <laughs> That's right. I've got no shame. I ain't afraid to admit it. <laughs> so it's like. Already. So it's like. The the research there it may be maybe started or triggered as an unofficial thing, but actually the results will be uh, will be fed into or will be gathered 
by somebody who actually knows what to do with the research in the end. And it could be that some of our heroes, like our known heroes, uh, accidentally come across this facility. It uh, could it be that the the facility that we study in Scribe and the Doctor, uh, that is the facility where. Uh, where uh, Corey uh, comes from is preparing the fodder for these uh, for for these travels. I like that. So it's like they they have these uh, in uh, human enhancement uh, uh, dudes, <laughs> human enhancement factories. Uh, in in sort of outskirts areas or like frontier areas where it doesn't uh, draw too much attention and and those areas will be uh, so the the peop the people all the, all the fifteens and sixteens and etc will be uh, everything that's done to them is in preparation of enable making them the unwitting unwilling travelers or like maybe maybe some of them even even volunteered but they by the time they their treatment has ended they they won't know that so in that sense the fact that Corey our Corey ends up uh, dimension hopping, uh, it's all po in a sense he is fulfilling his his thing. It's just that he's fulfilling it in a roundabout way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 and uh, it's like it could be that some of these quote unquote agents, uh, reluctant agents, uh are intended to be, you know, just sent through the natural gates uh, just to, you know, disseminate action or like, you know, just, just, just as test subjects but others are being placed into specific spots where they would, you know, initiate certain, uh, certain plot lines <laughs> the notepad's full. <laughs> There's no more empty pages. How did that happen? No. I've got notes here that are like, Kairos doesn't rip well off the hero roster. There's some old notes. Some other notepads maybe in here. This is, this is where the trouble starts. The claimers, these are the notes on all the biohacking. <laughs> there are some outrunners notes there. Oh, there's more notes on that detective story I tried writing once upon a time. Let me know. <laughs> Seeker. Oh, look, there's notes on Patreon there. That's something Ooh. I really need to get around <laughs> to doing. Mm. Okay. Some.
here are some of the notes, and here are the rest of the notes. <laughs> I will never learn. <laughs> you have to rip it out and tape it together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can hand me the cellar tape. Mm. So I'm thinking like um, if they uh, I'm thinking that the source of the people that they want as quote unquote agents would also vary. So for the bulk bulk of subjects would come from the frontier worlds and places where you don't notice people disappearing too much so nobody will in nobody will investigate unless you actually task somebody dun 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 the scribe uh, to actually look into it but uh, maybe certain specific quote unquote future agents uh, or, or candidates uh, would actually come uh, would actually be selected based on specific properties and this is this is where we get into the uh, into the territory of why certain characters might be of interest to the uh, to the people behind the curtain and and the and this is this is where the whole microbe concern or, or microbe uh, cooperation uh, would come in because if they are a big and ancient uh, biotech uh, corporation they would also uh, have the means to analyze many people and to keep track of many people and and to you know sc screen many people and since their services uh, take their technology everywhere they they feed they feed you the, the bacteria that make your poop and they provide you the bacteria that clean your skin so basically they they have their products are everywhere and uh, they would be able may maybe there are certain bacterial strains that they can uh, plant on people as a means of keeping track of them somehow S spy uh, spying via your microbiome <laughs> spy bacteria you heard it here first <laughs> CIA has already got this technology. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't see any more videos in a few weeks, this is the reason why. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've, been, we've been snatched up and taken into a facility and, and assigned into a team, and uh, they want to hear more about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, my thinking is that uh, point one, uh, since uh, it is possible to use, or like it is, it is not just possible but in certain cases it's probably very practical to use DNA to uh, encode other information than just genetic genetics but uh, you can you know you, you, you can you can use DNA for commu computing basically so if you have this computing DNA uh, writing inside a bacterial strain then if that bacterial strain gets you know passed on everywhere let's say people wear it people eat it etc then there might be some added function of uh, of uh, you know phone home <laughs> Some sort of some sort of uh, passing on the informa passing the information back to the home lab somehow, or, or let's say uh, the because the bacteria will multiply, their traces will be everywhere, and maybe that uh, spy DNA uh, records some simple information, and when you take a swab of that bacterial culture somewhere, you you get back that information.
and it would be a means to keep track of certain people. Although that doesn't even require bacteria, that just requires, I don't know, planting some, some material somewhere in or on their body. Give me one moment. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> this is a non essential text message at the moment. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm. Yes. Right, well, I've written a lot down. Uh, there's <laughs> pages upon pages of information. <laughs> minutes to digest some of it I feel yeah um. but uh, I kind of I kind of like some of the some of the ideas that spawn from all of this so this is this is something we should pursue further definitely uh, just quickly it's answered one of the questions because uh, this might sound dumb but I've always wondered why is Servanias experimenting on these people? Like, what's mm -hmm. his sort of end goal? Yeah. And there's always been a sort of, like, half-assed reason at the back of my mind that I've never had to explain. Mm -hmm. um, but now with this... <coughs> sorry, it's going dry again. Now with this, it's sort of... There's there's reasons in the air, right? There's stuff floating around. That we yeah, can... but, I mean, Keo actually kind of answered it with the Prime Servo. So Prime, Prime Servo's main goal is to you know thwart the boogeyman mm -hmm. yeah so whatever the local goals of the local servos are in certain in some ways they all feed into uh, prime servos prime goal mm -hmm. so that that has been there since the deja vu storyline but of, but of course uh, the local servos and their local agendas can have, you know, specializations and and all that. Yeah, I was talking about that. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. So the 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 first serv <laughs> baby's first servo, <laughs> the servo that you meet, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the evil one. <laughs> so it's not it's, it's not just science. Right. No, yeah, I, I hear a small dog making ruckus outside. I don't, I don't think it's my neighbor's dog. It's something smaller. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I think the the sort of um <laughs> censored. <laughs> the unwitting travelers thing uh, kind of oh, where where was I going with this uh, brain fart I, w I was I was making a point about uh, servo and experimentations as well but yeah basic ba basically what you said uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, oh, and and another thing is that uh, once you establish the whole, uh, uh, the whole uh, using other people to uh, learn more about the fabric of reality and to interact with the different realities and doing doing so more efficiently and you know, having to crack a few eggs there. Uh, this also gives us the bigger context of what brings those different characters that maybe don't have anything directly to do with each other, what brings them together. So for example, <coughs> I don't have a specific uh, specific idea in mind right now, but uh, the, the Harper family somehow fits into this. So it's like it could be that. So okay, uh, uh, th that much that much I have established at least in head canon that the people who uh, wanted to hire uh, Tristus form a group that those those people 
are either representing or connected to the Mikub uh, uh, corporation and and tie into uh, one of the servos, probably a local servo. Uh, but uh, what exactly their goal was and whom were they after? So. Uh, so if if we say that maybe they they were trying to uh, get themselves a targeted agent uh so then the question was who uh whom were they after uh is still open but uh but yeah <laughs> again the, the 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 second half of that thought kind of went for the important bits were there yeah yeah so it's like, uh, let's say, Corey was one of... Maybe, maybe Corey... I don't know, was was Corey one of the, you know, uh, targeted agents or was he just one of the bulk? We don't know. Uh, in my head canon, there's a story called Chasing the Prize and uh, he was he and whoever else survived was picked up. I think probably specifically... Mm. And taken back to him mm -hmm. uh, and if, if we you'll notice that there are some holes on this wall <laughs> now the hunt is no longer up there but in the original oh, no. story Logan from the hunt was one of the survivors who Servo got his hands on mm -hmm. Sage from Blackstar was one that he got his hands on and also Corey mm -hmm. uh, but they all came off the same ship originally and then thanks to yeah, so wiping yeah so I would think that okay you have you have the uh, bulk experiments, the people who you just snatch and enhance and then pass them through the through the cloud. Uh, then you have the uh, targeted agents or precision agents, whom you specifically seek out and try to influence their life so that they will become something. But then you also have the collateral agents, so the people who are tied to uh, tied to the person you would want to quote unquote recruit. So this way, it's it's not that everybody who ends up uh, hopping through the dimensions or or uh, doing something is the best and the brightest. It might be that they were kind of on the way and it was easier to just bring them on board. I like that collateral agent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and auxiliaries and, and such. Oh well I feel like we've uh, accomplished <laughs> quite a lot. I've got a lot of information down here. Yeah. I, I, a few questions. I, I didn't I didn't think I would th that wasn't the plan when I stepped out of bed this morning. <laughs> 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 and uh, and all of this <laughs> while glorious hasn't uh, brought me any closer to my own story <laughs> so that's here here's uh, here's the morale work on <laughs> work on some something and then uh, it, it's like it's like that saying that uh, keep writers as house guests because they will when they have writers block they will clean your house and they will do the dishes and and uh, they eat very little and they they only feed on coffee and, and such <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's like we've been we've been trying to crack the whole uh what ties the little stories and the big stories together i think we've been trying to crack it since like february even or like most of this year and I wasn't even trying to do that today. I was just—I <laughs> was just trying to steal some ideas for for a workshop story. <laughs> oh, look at that! Magic. Nice yeah. <laughs> awesome. Procrastination uh, works. Yeah. Uh, on that note, uh, I think I'm gonna stop recording now. We can keep talking, but I think this is a a value. Um, valiant end to a valiant discussion.